morning. Welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here. Lots of great energy in the studio today. Lots of dancing bodies we're going to celebrate today because we're going to talk about this upcoming Footholds uh, concert at UH Manoa. So I have three representatives from the dance department there. Um, fascinating lives of individuals who are choreographers, who are students, who are women, who are going to come together and celebrate their bodies by talking about it. So let's... Uh, not waste any time by introducing them. Why don't you all give yourself a chance to introduce yourselves, actually, and tell us what you want us to know about yourselves, your background, and your identity. Go ahead, Angela, you start. Okay. My name is Angela Sebastian, and I am from the Philippines. Um, so my background in dance is uh, ballet contemporary modern. So I was trained to, at a very young age, I was trained to teach um, and then when I um, did my undergrad in the Philippines, more open to choreography and performance to modern and contemporary dance. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll start with that. We'll start with that. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Bianca Moise. I am from South Florida, West Palm Beach. And then I went to UH. That's why I moved out here to Hawaii for school. I've been dancing since I was three, on and off. And then I went to performing arts schools as a kid in middle school, high school. I focused more on acting in high school rather than dance. But then in college, I took a break and then decided that it was what I was destined to do. And so I became a dance major. Uh -huh. um, then after I graduated, I spent a whole year at an internship with the dance studio on island. Oh. And I focused my, all my time on training my technique and my performance. And so that is why I'm back helping with UH. Great. Mm -hmm. OK, welcome back. And? Hi, I'm Christiane. I'm a first year at UH Manoa. Um, I'm a BFA student. And I've been dancing like Bianca since I was two years old. What? And <laughs> That's not I know, possible. like, how do you dance it too? But um, I've trained in ballet, contemporary, hip hop, uh, jazz, tap, hula. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like to focus on versatility. And um, I'm really excited to be a student at UH and now be. Um, Focusing on modern. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So now we have that all set up, like who you are. Um, let's talk about, we were on our way here, we are trying to figure out how do you define dance? I mean, because there's so many different forms, and yeah. it's not just the form, right? I mean, there's a lot of interpretation of what you consider as dance. Do you want to chime in on what you think that is? Uh, dance to me is like just the expression of who you are, or what you think things are, with the, the movements of your body. And it's just a form of communication, mm -hmm. in all honesty. But that, that's what dance is to me. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Just a form yeah. of expression. Well, I think um, in any art form, it is performance. Mm -hmm. So um, when we, I guess, focusing on dance, um, it is um, maybe a time or a moment or a, the opportunity to take your body or yourself to another place, to another realm or mm. something of who you don't want people to see or maybe how you imagine yourself to be mm -hmm. those things kind of so it's for me it's a space of um possibilities i don't know like being a character of something or embodying yourself um your inner self i don't know like so it could be something things. very personal yeah but at the same time it could be a mask for something that you yeah. don't want to go Absolutely. to and create yeah, something yeah. out and something as you said that, yeah. with the moment in time not only yeah. are you allowing yourself to be present but if you're doing it with others like you're sharing it with an audience and you're allowing them to be present in that moment of time mm -hmm. with you which is kind of insane because it's like say that the dance is based on a love story uh -huh. that you're experiencing and so if it's just you two, then only you two experience it. But when you have an audience, you're sharing it with them, and they're going through that story with you uh -huh. without mm -hmm. even having to hear you speak. Like that's They just true. see it in your movement. Right. Yeah. But that's the it calls to the audience uh, performer relationship. Like, how much in your choreographic process do you think about how the audience is going to perceive it? Or do you do it for yourself? You know, where do you it kind depends. of focus? Yeah. 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 And that goes in hand with... Um, I think that dance can be anything that you say it is. I think walking across the street, if you say that it's a dance, then it can be a dance. Um, I think sitting there and doing nothing can also be a dance. It just, um, it's an art. So if you say it is something, then it's something. Like a painting could be like somebody spitting on a table and like, right. as long as you call it art, then it's art. Mm -hmm. I think that um, kind of explains mm -hmm. what I think dance is, but also it doesn't mm -hmm. have to necessarily be performative. Like, mm -hmm. 
you could be performing but not acknowledging that the audience is there at all. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So it just depends on how you want to interpret. Yeah. yeah. If you want what Some, it is. Sometimes people, it's like they don't make the dance for other people. Mm. Right. And mm. so it's like when it is, uh, it really is a choreographer's choice. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, when you're looking back at it, there are times if you are going to perform it for an audience where you're like, maybe I should not do right. that. <laughs> or this is not reading the way I wanted it mm -hmm. or intended it to at all. But mm -hmm. that, again, depends on the piece. Like, really, like, is this yeah. for an audience or is this right. for, like, nobody? And, and when for nobody, how does that work for you in your personal lives? I'm just curious. How do you kind of work through your movements when you're by yourself? Oh. Do you do it in front of a mirror? Do you do it in the shower? Do you like go, I want to play with this movement and I want to kind of work it? Like, yeah. what's that process for you? I think it's very, a very interesting process because it's also um, figuring out the aesthetics of the movement, but at the same time exploring your um, the inner motivation, kind of like going deep into like, what, and then not thinking about what it's going to look like outside. Okay. You know, huh. so it's, for me, okay. that, that's how I kind of think of how I develop my movements. Yeah, yeah I'm kind of relating it to, I'm not creating this for people to appreciate it kind yeah. of thing. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know what gets me Safeway aisles or any type of like grocery store? I love dancing in grocery stores. That's so funny because so my daughter does that too. There's yeah. something about that, that lane, aisle that way that presents the it's path. Like a, it's like a catwalk, I swear. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like ready yeah. and then I'll just start dancing. People will walk past me, but it's mm -hmm. one of those moments where if I'm just out doing something, I get randomly inspired. Uh -huh. And you really have to not care like yeah. if people are watching you because sometimes that movement, it just meant something to you yeah. in that moment. Right. And then you try to remember it and then I'll go back mm -hmm. in the mirror, look at it mm -hmm. and, you know, fine, tweak it, make sure it's what I want and yeah. like what I'm going for. Uh -huh. But usually I don't have to do that. Usually it's just like I try to stay true to what I felt in that moment. Right. That's true, yeah. But yeah. that's just such a great idea. All of a sudden I have this image of this performance in a supermarket. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. You guys should oh. do something like that. I and mean, people can stand around, that's look at that security camera that's watching <laughs> you guys in different aisles and doing PK turns down. And I am sure so many leaf. security <laughs> men have seen me like go crazy in Safeway multiple mm -hmm. times. Like that is definitely mm -hmm. a place. Um, mm -hmm. Bathrooms, sometimes I get caught yeah. having way too much fun in the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> where are you? Where? How do you like... You just, in a bathroom. You just like, you just, um, <laughs> you're just feeling the music in your yeah. head, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone yeah. walks in, and you're like, oh, oops. <laughs> oh, dressing rooms, too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, how um, do you uh, embody your culture and your identity in your work? Have you thought about that? Like, how much that has influenced, because um, you talked about who you are, but how does that translate into your, your creative art form? Like maybe you're from Florida. Um, what is your ethnicity? I'm half Japanese and half Caucasian. Does that influence any of your body language? You know, it's just mm -hmm. kind of, you don't really think about this, but mm -hmm. it actually probably affects. Yeah. Well, mm. do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think, yeah, in the beginning, I didn't think about that. But then when you kind of, obviously, you find similarities from your teachers and those things. But then eventually, once the, that um, transfer um, happens to your body, you cannot really deny that you have your own movement and it becomes your own as well, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I guess um, being influenced um, not just a, as a Filipino body, but I guess trained in a Filipino c culture setting, mm -hmm. um, it kind of, um, yeah, the training is there, the... the, the, the the uh, the um the tradition is there kind of but i would say in a lot of my choreographies i don't intentionally put the filipino in it you know like but cuz i do have a question um to myself as well of how do i define filipino identity right. so i can't really say that this is filipino identity you know right. so but it is exploration of my identity yeah. from where i came from right you know so it's it's it, embedded you just yeah, know, right? yeah so yeah. this is actually one of the talks that i did with the conference of um that becoming of that process of identity that it doesn't stop because mm. right now, I mean, like, I came from Philippines, I went to Hong Kong, and then I went to Hawaii. You danced like, at Disneyland. Like, I mean, yeah. that's like... So the culture is different, mm. too. So, right. you know, like, that development is still happening right now. So yeah. I can't really say. No, yeah, you know? just defining like, your own voice. And honestly, I feel like 
you know, a lot of people ask you how your culture affects your dancing, and it, of course, has an impact, but at the same time, I feel like once you come to this country or once you're in this country, this country has an impact on you yes. and your voice and how you identify as yourself and what really matters to you. Um, my Both my parents are Haitian, oh. and so I'm a first-generation, like, Haitian-American, so I have a huge cultural background with them. And Haitian, like, Caribbean style of dancing is very intuitive. It's very, like, either everyone is coming together or mm -hmm. they show you the pain, they show you the struggle, and it's, like, extremely expressive. Huh. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, yeah. However, at the same time, it's, like, I'm also American, so then it's, like, mm -hmm. I try to, like, mix those values together while also reminding myself that even though I'm Haitian and even though I'm American, I'm still myself. Mm. And I, mm -hmm. there are things that I identify with both and there are things that I don't identify with both. And I respect that, but I also respect myself and I just try to express myself to the best of my ability. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think in my dancing, you can definitely tell um, the different styles of dance that I have passions for. Um, especially like in my choreography that's in Footholds, you can tell that I love hip hop and there are like certain little elements of hip hop in my choreography normally, even when I choreograph contemporary or modern, it will still have that influence. And I'll throw in technique because I have a passion for ballet and it's just like all those little things come together. And also growing up in Hawaii and learning hula as a part of like public education, you know, taking <laughs> yeah, Hawaiiana. Yeah. And then um, within the last two years, I've also learned very minimally some Tahitian. Um, oh. I'm a dancer at Rakahula in Waikiki, so um, we do have to perform Tahitian and hula um, every show. So I've kind of had to delve into more the native style of dance, and training in that has definitely taught me about like simplicity more in hula and the beauty of the hands, mm -hmm. and um, I think that that has also affected does My it complicate style. the body language or conflict? Because sometimes I, when I think Tahitian or I think like hip hop, it's the opposite of ballet, right? Something mm -hmm. comes from inside out, you're holding it in, and so the other things you have to let loose. And mm. so how do you use that contradicting kind of body language? Or do you have to kind of sacrifice one for the other? I think it's an amazing exploration of um, just variety, oh, like yeah. you know, versatility of how you can actually adapt your body to being this and then this and finding that there's a different identity to this and this. But can you be both? Like, I, I've, I've <laughs> just had some challenges. Yeah, but it's like that. a push and a pull, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just like a, you're restricted and now you're not, and you're restricted and now you're not. And yeah. I've seen people effortlessly, like effortless, effortlessly combine both. But then mm. I've also seen people who have struggled to like find their voice yeah. within, with both. So it's, it, it, can be challenging. Yeah. However, if you know yourself very well, then you can really um, express it perfectly. I guess it's, it's very, it can be challenging, but it's like if you have the right idea and you know what you want, like which parts you want to be more restricted and which parts you want to be more loose and like more fun and more fulfilling. Well, not more fulfilling, but like more, I guess, your own personal hip hop, Tahitian, um, you know, cultural style versus uh, technical style. It's like, it can, they can both work well together. But don't you have to acknowledge what your strengths are technically <laughs> in certain forms? Which kind of goes back to cultural influences because maybe you can move because it's in your blood or, you know, <laughs> the Asian style is more controlled and perhaps it's harder to do hip hop. Like I read my daughter, she's always being criticized for hip hop. It sucks because she can't let loose. And it's interesting the, you know, yeah. what you're trained mm -hmm. to develop and what you're going against. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I constantly um, think about that, and you have to have a heightened sense of body awareness, definitely, if you want to jump in back and forth between the two. Um, I find that when I'm focusing more on hip hop, um, going back into ballet, is it's harder to find my center placement, because in hip hop, you kind of have to let it loose, and you have to be very grounded, yeah. where in ballet, you have to be very lifted constantly, uh -huh. yeah. and same mm -hmm. vice versa for hip hop. If I'm training in a lot of ballet, which right now, I'm training more in ballet than hip hop, so when I go back into hip hop, mm -hmm. it's harder for me to be grounded and it's harder for me to like slump my shoulders over or like yeah. do mm -hmm. those kinds of movement mm -hmm. movements because mm -hmm. I find myself being very lifted that I'm not allowing my body to do what it like normally relax. would. Yeah. yeah, it's just finding a balance between the two. Um, if you're doing a lot of ballet, mm -hmm you know, jump back into some yeah. hip hop and same. Yeah. For the other and way. just recognizing your strength and weaknesses yeah. in those different genres. But I think, yeah, knowing your weakness can also be mm. like a 
strength in different right. ways, you yeah. know? Yeah, so... Yeah, being honest with like, yourself is a major part of dance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that you can really identify what's going wrong and then, you know, focus on that and fix it in that right. moment. Right. And then, um, yeah, I also, that's a major thing. It's just not never lying to yourself. <laughs> that's why it's a constant process, right? It's yeah. a constant exploration and mm -hmm. self-examination mm -hmm. and yep. taking in your influences around you and your yeah. stimulants and your interests and and things that maybe you have trouble with and you want to kind of confront through dance. I don't know. There's a lot. So why don't we take a quick break and we'll come back. We'll talk about your individual pieces and your choreographic um, vision of, of your pieces. And again, mm -hmm. just to remind you all, this is, um, we would like to promote the upcoming uh, UH uh, dance uh, performance of footholds it starts tonight but we'll give you all that information later but just remember it starts tonight it's wednesday to sunday and we'll give you more details later so don't go away hey aloha my name is andrew lanning i'm the host of security matters hawaii airing every wednesday here on think tech hawaii live from the studios i'll bring you guests i'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe your co-workers safe your family safe to keep our community safe uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to At The Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at five. I'll see you there. Back here in studio, uh, <laughs> talking about dancers and choreographic visions based on identity and cultural influence and just our bodies. Mm -hmm. Let's start again. Uh, so we have Angela, Bianca, and Christian here, um, all choreographers for the upcoming Footholds concert. So let's talk a little bit about the pieces you've chosen to create for this performance. Um, okay, so I'll go first. <laughs> um, for this Foothold, I um, the title of my piece is Tagsibol, which is Tagalog, and uh, English is spring. Mm -hmm. um, so originally, uh, my piece was created for the Imin or Imin Center uh -huh. because I wanted to work with the arches right. and basically that reappearing images of um, um, of the self, like yourself. Uh -huh. um, and then, but then there was like some issues for safety. So this is just like um, like the behind the scenes kind okay, of issues okay. that we had to transfer my piece to the trees besides be, beside the Kennedy Theater. Okay. So it was a very challenging process for me because I had to kind of adapt the movement to the more nature, like, you know, um, the trees and the ground. And um, because it was easier for me to play with the Imin Center, um, trying to have that contrast of the woman's body as kind of soft, and um, in contrast to that arc, which uh -huh. is very strong uh -huh. and stable and right. grounded. So when I transferred it to uh, the trees beside the Kennedy Theater, what um, kind of made me explore was the space. Mm. Yeah, the space, the color of it, and still trying to keep that inspiration and just... Um, just explored it with bigger movements because um, if you have this huge, bigger space and the dancers are kind of eaten mm. with, with that space. So, mm. um, but what I, what I can tell you about it um, is, is it's just uh, celebrating um, the, the spring um, life, growth, and those things. So yeah. it's actually very so, uh, relevant, the tree and the, you know, yeah. the concept of life and, you know, the creative elements of dance for you to be able to adapt to a different situation yes. is kind yeah. of the, the beauty of, of your art, Yeah, because right? it like grew into something else. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something exactly. like that. Yeah. So very things happen for a reason, piece. I always yeah. think. So. It's very beautiful. You have, like, <laughs> she has really lovely movement that uh -huh. she, and I feel like your movement... Do you dance it yourself to... or you have oh, dancers? Oh, no, my dad oh, dancers, okay. yeah. 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 yeah, but the movement, yeah. like you could tell, translates well on all of her dancers, and like they kind of look like fairies, like oh, with the trees and yeah, everything. Yeah, that's so true. Actually, I thought like forest nymph. 
Yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure, Initially, absolutely. they were like guardians of this. Yeah, and oh. then they're like summoned because uh, my music is um, Kenny Endo's Noon Cycles. Okay. So it's a chi taiko drumming. So uh, that like do, 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 like bring, brings them out. It's not live performance like, though, right? No, of the music. Not, yeah, there was a piece with live performance though, right? It's so yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So for my piece, it's called Old School Funk. Um, I originally choreographed, so it was the first piece I've ever really choreographed as an adult dancer uh, for like like something that I choreographed start, start to finish like the whole song because the original song was like five minutes and you know that's a long time to be on stage <laughs> and it was a lot of music and it was a lot of creativity and I wanted to challenge myself to really just try something different um, something more old school something that I knew I'd have fun with mm -hmm. um, and then I did that I got my dancers we did it but then uh, it's been about a year since I've done the piece and so when I was asked to choreograph for UH, I was like, okay. And then I tried listening to the music and I was like, ugh, I can't, I hate this song. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what, maybe I should do the same song, but just a different version. I picked a, a new version. I got, uh, my old dancers unfortunately could not do the piece. So we got new dancers to perform it. Uh -huh. And then I just, I recycled some choreography, some okay. parts that really stood out to me that I knew were like, you know, just big, um, milestones for the piece that I love and then I added new choreography because after that year of training and performance and technique I was like I've grown so much like yeah. I need this piece to grow with me yes. I don't want to be the same person a year ago like I want to nice. show everyone how much I've changed and show everyone how much I can do and really like push myself to do something even better so what took me about five months to create like that beginner what I consider like beginner intermediate piece I transformed within a, this past month as an advanced piece with two new dancers who are so incredibly wonderful, who honestly gave their all and tried their best. And they, it really shows that they've been working so hard. And I just, um, I've used movements that I grew up with. I'm sure you grew up with too. They're very like 80s, I don't know, I 90s. grew up like Chinese anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <It's> so sad. <laughs> I don't know, but like, like you see it on TV, you know, like those hip hop movements that yeah. you either see like Michael or Janet or, you know, Beyonce or anybody really do where they just like let loose and have a good time mm. and it's just like so fun. And you see, you, you know, you everything care. you do, you embody that. It's like, <laughs> how, how do you work with uh, dancers who, don't you have to, and all this goes to all three of you, is how do you work with the dancers on their abilities or maybe what they don't have which you want it to work with, you know? Oh, you, uh, sometimes you it to, depends on the dancer too because yeah. their skill level, if they're beginners, right. you, you have to break it down. I remember I used to like, I'd have like this, mm, 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 and then I'd be like, okay, let's do feet and then hips <laughs> and then so oh now we're all together you know what i mean and then yeah. some dancers they can just like watch you and then get it right. immediately right. Right. right yeah so you have to work with that mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm. okay cool interesting well i guess instead of imposing like a movement mm -hmm. um like uh if you just ask them to do something and they did do it differently uh -huh. oh, yeah. then you can stick with that too, kind mm -hmm. of something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. how I like I play around with it, so I don't just impose like what I want. Like, yeah. no, you have to be here and you have to be here. Like, mm -hmm. if they do it differently, that you know that works too. So like, don't be as rigid like, as a choreographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to kind of mold with what you're working with. Yeah, exactly. yeah I think that's a collaborative process of your dancers instead of just giving out. You're also sharing. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, their piece too, in yeah. a way. Like they're performing yeah, yeah. it, so to incorporate a part of them into it really makes it their own mm -hmm. and it gives a sense of pride for them to perform it a little yeah. bit more. Okay. And I yeah. think when you combine the strengths of yourself, the choreographer, or whoever else is the choreographer, with the strengths of your dancers, it just brings the piece to like a That's whole true. nother level. Like yeah. when you choreograph on a set of dancers and tell them do exactly this, mm -hmm. it's not going to be as good as if you work with them, I think, in the process. Yeah. yeah. So Christian, what's your piece about? Uh, my piece is called um, Enigmatic Inspiration, and I was inspired by inspiration for this piece. Um, inspired by inspiration. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've heard stories about um, artists who try to explain the phenomenon of crea creating something, creating art, and sometimes they explain that they don't really feel the inspiration coming from like their mind or their heart like their hands just move and it just goes and they're creating and it just happens so through my piece i'm exploring the power of like external force and um just exploring the process of inspiration Hmm, I like that. So, um, you know, on that note, how do we inspire people to kind of appreciate 
the world of dance. I mean, some people take it as just a performance. Some people kind of uh, associate themselves with the piece, and some people like to distance themselves from it. Any comments or suggestions on how to celebrate the bodies through dance? I guess before you try to like um, um, ask, not really ask, or like encourage somebody to understand or appreciate something, is that I guess try to do it first. You know, like maybe um, um, the way I would encourage people is like kind of ask them to not be afraid to move your body. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you just try it yourself first? And then eventually you appreciate and kind of relate to what the dancers are like, you know, doing and exploring with their bodies too. That uh, it is important that we all have bodies. Yes. We are not different from, you know, like we, we, we may be different because we are trained, mm -hmm. but then we all have bodies. Do you think yeah, as I women, your bodies, uh, do you use that aspect, the fact that you are a woman into your work? Or is that something that's just... Sometimes I feel like it conflicts with the, huh. the motif or the message of what you're trying to convey. Mm -hmm. For example, in my piece, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with sexuality or the body, mm -hmm. but I was yeah. getting feedback where people were saying like, oh, this part, I'm getting like very sexual motifs. Huh. And that was definitely not what I was going for. Mm -hmm. But women's bodies are just somehow interpreted in those kinds of ways yeah. by society. So mm -hmm. it's really hard to avoid and people will take it how they want it. But I do feel like that sometimes interferes with what you're trying to say. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely, like, my piece is definitely also not based on sexuality or gender. Like very gender neutral, anyone could perform it. Um, but at the same time, whenever I work with men, women, people who don't identify as either, I really encourage them if a style comes off more feminine or mm -hmm. masculine despite their gender or sexuality to just pursue it. Because honestly, if that's your form of expression that yes. you mm -hmm. are truly feeling, then just yeah. do it. Like really go for it. You don't have to record it if you don't want people to find out about it, but if, it, if that's what makes you happy, then you should totally do it and use that as a therapeutic stress relief. Yeah, so therapy is another form, you know, dance, through dance, to be able to transfer and to kind of release yeah. or to explore. Yeah, it's really absolutely. interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let's tell everybody when and where this uh, performance is going to be. Yeah. Um, I think we have a flyer. We're going to, um, we but do. what is, yeah, and what's the theme? Let's share the theme. Oh, so. Glimpse. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And it is glimpse. you guys can announce the details. Yes. So the glimpse will be taking place at Kennedy Theater at the Earl Ernest Lab Center from February 20th to the 24th. It's going to be tonight, Wednesday at 7.30. And it goes from Wednesday to Saturday at 7.30. This Sunday, the 24th, it'll be at 2.30. It will be a match. Two, uh, two, yeah, two, two, two p.m. I'm so sorry about that. Mm -hmm. At the matinee show yeah. at Kennedy Theater, Earl Ernest Lab Center at UH Manoa. And yeah. there's a, the installation outside that's not on the flyer. You want to talk a little quickly about yeah, that? Yeah, so it happens 30 minutes before the yeah. show. Oh, yeah. so you have to come before? You have yes, to come at yes, 7? Yes, yes, you have to come yes, at 7. Yes, you should come before 7. Seven. Before yes. 7. Before 7. <laughs> 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 what time are you there? It's <laughs> <laughs> 45. Yeah, it's 45 just to be safe. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, so there's some kind of uh, installations of some videos, mm -hmm. multimedia aspects of performance. Yeah. Right? Yes. Some and, projections. And your piece is outside by the tree. Yes. And yes, yes. Uh, your pieces, I'm looking forward so, to some hip hop yeah. Yeah. and some modern yeah. kind of cross cultural <laughs> fusion. Yeah. Every fusion yeah. of every yeah. sort of body language. Cultural I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, <laughs> girls. For thank and you. I'm so excited for your choreographic yeah. visions yeah. to be shown yeah. starting tonight, and it's throughout this weekend. Please uh, support UH Manoa's dance department in the Footholds concert. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya.